Hey everybody, Nick here, and it's been a long day. So in order to have a little bit of joy in my life, I'm going to go on ahead and do a knife disassembly. This time I'm going to work on the Ontario Carta Prime. So the Ontario Carta Prime here is one heck of a knife in some ways and a weird in other ways, but uh, what makes it exceptional is the action. And right now this guy is slightly off-center, but it's flipping very, very smoothly. I mean, the smoothness is there. The other thing that I've noticed just looking inside of here, and it's I don't think I can show you this on the phone, is that it is already missing some internal bearings. Somebody must have taken this guy apart and uh, not included all of the bearings when they put it back together. So that's something I got to kind of keep in mind, that uh, if I'm missing bearings, it ain't me. But nonetheless, this is a knife that's using loose bearings, whether it's officially IKBS or not, I don't know. But at the very least, I want to make sure that I uh, am not letting those go crazy here. So a uh, Torx T7 was a little too small there, so I'm going to move to a T8 and hope that that does the trick for me. On the pivot here. Holy crap. Okay, that side wasn't turning. There we go. This side is. Beautiful. Pop that off. And let's see if these fasteners... No, of course not. These use a different fastener size. It's not T7 either. Ooh, probably looking at a T6 here. Uh, yeah, let's try a T6. There we go. That'll do. Uh, come on now. If you're hearing booms and explosions and whatnot, the uh, fiancé is watching Independence Day in the other room. Which is a good movie for certain values of good. Not the new one, but the old one. So it's not the case. Do not adjust your TV screen. The, uh, the Nick is not being invaded by the aliens here, to the best of my knowledge. I feel like maybe Z Hunter could make an Alien Hunter line. That would probably be pretty excellent. I can see tie-ins and whatnot there. There we go. So that's popped loose, and here we are. So we can see we've got some screws. Hey, there are those loose bearings. Yeah, okay, so this is... If it ain't IKBS, it's, it's pretty damn close. Oh, that's... That's ugly. Alrighty, let's go on ahead and take a look at what we got going on in here. I'm being very careful now because the bearings are loose and that's going to make them likely to, um, well, to travel. Bearings do like to travel. So, uh, let's go on ahead and isolate my bearings. First off, I'm going to use my little oiler here and just remove the bearings from the knife so I can wipe things clean. Just try and get those off in a little pile here. There we go. And they are greased. It's nothing too thick, so, you know, there, there's not too much danger going on. But it is nonetheless kind of a problem. And I'm going to try and separate out the bearings on this side from the bearings on the other side, just so I kind of have a roughly equal number. Although, again, I'll try and do my best to count. There we go. Almost there. Oh, come on, you little bugger. IKBS bearings are similar, are always tricky. Okay, so I got the bearings from one side over there. Let's go ahead and move the bearings from the other side over to here. See, IKBS are loose bearings are nothing to be afraid of. Oh, oh, I got a hitchhiker. Nothing really to be afraid of. A lot of people are like, oh my god, IKBS, I am never taking the knife apart. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side now, having confirmed there were no bearings all over it. You know, and I at some level don't blame them. It is a bit of a pain in the neck, but it's not so bad in the grand scheme. I would rather take apart a knife with IKBS than a knife with proprietary screws any day of the week. Because IKBS is designed to work well. Proprietary screws are designed to make your life difficult. Alrighty, so I believe I have all my bearings. <laughs> I got all my balls in the right place, so to speak. There we go. Now at this point, I'm gonna, eh, what am I gonna do first? 
I'll start off by going ahead and washing the, uh, cleaning the, the knife itself. So here's some rubbing alcohol, which I'm spraying all over the place. You know, hey, whatever. Internally screwed lock bar insert, by the way, right here, which is not a bad touch for a knife that's this inexpensive. The finishing quality, though, on the inside of this knife is just not stellar. I'll say that. I mean, not that it necessarily needs to be, but all of these surfaces are very, very sharp. There's no chamfering. These little, like right here, this right here is very, very sharp and unpleasant. So there you go. Yeah, it looks about right for the moment at least. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the blade. Whoa there. So on the blade, one really ugly thing is look at this, um, look at this stop pin channel there. That is, that's some quality ugly. It's all jittery and whatnot. Not that it, again, needs to be precisely beautiful as long as it clears the pin than whatever. But at the same time, they removed a lot more material there than they necessarily needed to. <coughs> and they didn't do it in a spectacular fashion. I can't say looking at this that I'm absolutely over the top with the Ontario quality there. But then again, the price point. There's a whole lot you can do in a $100 flipper with this kind of action. I'm really not going to judge you for. Well, I'm going to judge you. That's the point of a reviewer. What do you do for fun, Nick? Oh, I judge knife makers. Yep. I live a charmed life. Okay, going to go ahead and lift the backspacer off here. Maybe. Going to try. There we go. Oh, there. This is just a little chunk of titanium here. And I'm going to use a little bit more booze here, which I'm, again, just going to spray everywhere because why not? This is why you should never disassemble your knife in the car, because you'll smell like alcohol. And then you get pulled over, and you're going to have yourself a pretty bad time. Unless the cop's a knife guy. Eh, probably even if the cop's a knife guy. All righty. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Q-tip here. Clean out the inside of the pivot hole. Everything else looks pretty good. All right, now let's bring uh, begin the long and laborious process of rebuilding. Yeah, I'm going to get this groove a little bit better. Doesn't need to be, but... Eh. Even this has some really sharp edges here, which leaves me slightly unimpressed. There we go. Pop through. Alrighty. So let's go on ahead and start the reassembly process here. Let's figure out where the hell this backspacer goes. There we are. Wow. I hope it's not as loud on the uh, video as it is here. Okay. So unfortunately, so somebody had reassembled this ahead of time because the uh, the pivot is D-shaped here, so you've got a nice little, there's always, and there's a D-shaped hole here. So I think it was on backwards, but that's okay. I can repair this. Come on. Come on, you little bugger. Oh, you know you want to. Let's go in there. Don't you want to go home? I'll go home. Come on, don't fight me. I am the human. I will win. There we go. All right. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and start the reassembly process here. I'll go ahead and first off... Oh, that's not the oil I needed. Just go heavyweight on this guy because it's going to be everywhere anyways. So heavyweight nano oil, 85 weight. Again, everybody's always asking this. Well, Nick, where do you get your nano oil? Same place everybody else does from the nano oil guy. And it may well be snake oil, but that's okay. It does the job. Here we go. Alrighty. Now... We reassemble. 
Hmm. So the blade will eventually go together like this. So I will start off by doing this side. Actually, where's my wire here? Just counting the number of bearings I got here. All right. That'll be roughly evened out now. I'm sure somebody can count better than I can watching this postdoc. But you know what? I don't care quite that much. It doesn't actually really matter if the bearings are the same, uh, if they're the same number of bearings on both sides, etc. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, now I'm just kind of cleaning the bearings a little bit using this microfiber cloth that I clean every so often. Actually, use a little bit of booze here. Beautiful. All right, now that'll be good to go. Let's go ahead and start actually applying the bearings. So first step in any IKBS sort of affair is to go ahead and really give a nice thick layer of the lubrication in the track where the bearings go. Now actually I'm going to grab some tweezers because I don't hate myself quite that much. Here we go. So now I got my tweezers and I'm just going to start dropping oh, one by one. these bearings into this here groove and then the grease well in this case the oil which is thicker than usual acts as an adhesive and keeps those bearings happily contained so at that point what I will do is lower basically the scale onto this guy and pinch it on through Oh, like ABS. It's a slick system in many ways. I can respect it, although still not the greatest in terms of usability for the field. Come on now. There we go. I occasionally feel like any time I make one of these disassembly videos, you just add five minutes to the video for IKBS or similar, and that's okay. And I think I mentioned this, but I'm in my IKBS jail here, this little area, so that way none of the bearings can go anywhere and roll away. All right, so everything seems to be pretty well in place here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do after I oil the detent pad, this is a knife that'll do nicely with that. The action on this knife really is something pretty impressive and special. There we go. Is I'm gonna go ahead and lower the pivot into the pivot hole. And unfortunately, I can't show this really well on camera because I have to look in obliquely from the side. But there we go. We're in. All right. Same deal. Other side. Put a little bit of booze down to break down any of the existing grease. There we go. Good sign that your bearings are clean is that they no longer stick to your fingers in any way. It's nice. Okay. So now, again... Nice liberal coating. And let me drop in the stop pin while I'm thinking about this. Just because it's one less thing to worry about. Come on, stop pin.
you know, I'm not getting this stop pin loose. So you know what? I'm not going to drop in this stop pin. The thing I got to watch out for is dropping an IKBS ball and having it go into the stop pin hole because that's less than ideal. Similarly, going into the pivot hole is not a beautiful thing. There we go. That's nicely secured. Now let's go ahead and put some balls in it. Hey, I gotta uh, thank my buddy Francisco for loaning me this knife and very specifically instructing me that I can take it apart. Hopefully it'll be in better shape when it gets back to him than it was when I got it. I always appreciate when the viewers will let me play with their IKBS balls. It's almost too easy with IKBS. You know, dirty humor is, it's everywhere, but in the knife world, oh, come on, you little bugger. All right, well, luckily it didn't go into the uh, stop pin hole yet. Not the yet. Helps to compensate for the fact that I am not necessarily a brilliant man. Come on, you little buggers. There we go. Just a few more here. And here we go. I'm gonna make a little bit more room for the other balls. We are almost good to go. Beautiful. Alrighty, so we have all of our balls properly alive. I'm sorry, I'm 12. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is while I'm thinking about it and before I get into anything else, I'm gonna just double check the spare parts laying around. I got a pivot screw. Three backspacer screws. The backspacer is installed. Alrighty. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my little oiler tool here. I'll wipe it off real quick. Make sure there's no oil on it. And then I'm going to use it to apply a little bit of Loctite to the inside of each one of these backspacer screws. Oh, well, holes, I suppose. And to the inside of the pivot. That'll keep everything sealed up. And in a world of IKBS, oh God, do you want to be sealed up? Okay, now what I'm going to do is very slowly set this down on top. And so I need to pop in the back spacer, which is a process of aligning three different holes. Come on, you little buggers. And the thing is, I cannot rotate the knife too much or else I risk getting some of the IKBS balls out of their little hole. And that's that's dangerous. So step one is going to be getting that backspacer in there. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm popping the lock bar down. Now before I do anything else, I am going to go ahead and put in a pivot screw because, oh my god, it's not good to have your pivot separate out. You'll end up with some problems. Okay, there we go. Now, I think... Yeah, that looks good. Okay, good. Hallelujah. I think that can be a little tighter, and in fact, I'll make it a little tighter right now because, again, don't want any IKBS issues. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw in the backspacer screws. We are almost done on this guy. It's actually behaving nicely. And it is disassembling and reassembling very nicely, too, which is a skill. Making a knife that can be put together and taken down is very 
well, not difficult, but it, 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 I've certainly seen people screw it up, and so I do appreciate when somebody does it well, even on something that's pretty inexpensive. And one more time here with feeling. There we go. There we go. Now at this point, this is a little looser than I'd like. Which is implying to me that something is awry in my pivot area. I'm hoping that it's just a question of I don't have enough pivot tension yet. I need to tighten up the pivot and that that'll make everything better. But that's a little too tight. So I'm going to loosen this back a little tiny bit. No blade play. Blade is centered. Action is good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Problem solved. Just a question of pivot tension. And so I, one thing I'll point out is that I had it all the way torqued down and then it was a little bit too tight. And so I just backed it off a little tiny amount. In fact, I'm backing it off just even slightly more right now in an effort to see. Because especially in a knife like this, you really want it to be really showing off that action. Because that's the one thing this knife's got going for it. It is a one trick pony. Um, and so if you're doing something wrong with the action, you got yourself a problem there. But okay, um, at this point in time, we have disassembled and reassembled your Ontario Carter Prime. It is even smoother than it was before, which is pretty impressive. And uh, now I can go on ahead and do myself a uh, reasonable review of it. Hope this has been interesting to you. Um, the Carter Prime is an interesting knife. And uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.